When drying plastics, the dry airflow is one of the four main drying parameters and plays an important role. It needs to be precisely adjusted to the desired material throughput. A simple drying system produces constant airflow. This means that during normal operation, neither the individual airflow of the attached drying bin nor the overall airflow changes. The material throughput should be set so that the material reaches at least the required residual moisture on the way down from the top of the drying bin. If the material throughput is less, this means that the material will stay in the drying bin longer. However, if it's dried for longer, there's a risk that it could overdry. The material is then too dry for further processing or could be damaged. Mo is also familiar with this problem. When ironing clothes is more work than usual, the drying machine could be the reason. Mo has a look and of course, shelf dry washing is just too dry. Iron dry would have been better. Back to the plastics dryer. At too little throughput, the temperature of the return air of the drying bin increases because the energy reduced by less material no longer coincides with the energy brought in by the process air. It's now up to the airflow control to rebalance the energy made available with the reduced energy input. This means that without adjustment, the system will receive more energy than it requires, which uses more energy than necessary. This surplus of energy has other negative consequences as the temperature of the exhaust air at the drying bin increases and the return air fed back to the dry air generator is also at a higher temperature level. This higher temperature level then reduces the efficiency of the drying agent. As a result, the resting time of the material must be adjusted to the set drying time via the material throughout. Once the material has reached the bottom, it needs to have the necessary residual moisture. If the material remains in the drying bin for longer, it will already be dry further up in the drying bin. This results in less water evaporation in the same time. Because evaporating water has a cooling effect, the return air temperature rises if less air evaporates. Here's an everyday example. Mo loves summer holidays. Finally, he has time to read. But sometimes, it can get too hot. Mo cools down with the help of a fan and a damp cloth. The cool air is generated by the water evaporating. If a return air cooler is present, this will cool the return air to the ideal temperature for the drying process. However, this also means that unnecessarily generated thermal energy must be cooled back down, and this can be expensive. This is similar to always driving at full speed and only regulating speed with the brake pedal. This uses a lot of fuel and the brakes will quickly wear out. But there's a better option. Drying systems with automatic airflow control only provide the drying bins with enough process air as needed for the current throughput. For this, a throttle valve in the drying bin regulated the airflow. Additionally, the airflow generated by the blower is adjusted to the total requirement. This is necessary to make sure that the airflow saved at one bin is not sent to the remaining bins. The following experiment helps to explain the principle. A hairdryer fan blows air via pipes at three candles, which flicker but do not go out. If we block one of the pipes at the same airflow, at least one of the candles will go out. Why is it important in practice to regulate the airflow? More air means more thermal energy is needed to achieve the set temperature. Because more air means the heating element cools more quickly. This is the same as with a hairdryer. We have set a hairdryer to temperature level 1, lower level 1 and measure the air temperature. Then we reduce the airflow. The temperature rises. Conclusion, the automatic airflow control for dry air dryers helps systems with changing material throughputs save energy and protects the material.